Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gamer to the comment video. Let's tackle the latest round of rumors concerning AMD's Radeon R9 390X and 380X, shall we? It seems a really good idea. Now, we've already had quite a lot of information popping up recently concerning this, and one that pretty much seems to be just constantly in the news is the fact that the GPU will feature HBM, although it's not had 100% confirmation, it would appear from the latest leak which comes to us from a LinkedIn profile that this is indeed the case. Now if you want more information on this it is in the article linked in the video description but moving on. So the leak, well or should I say the duties of the AMD's System Architect Manager, I'm probably going to pronounce this incorrectly but I believe it's Linglen Zhang and they have and I quote Develop the world's first 300 watt 2.5D discrete GPU SOC using stacked high bandwidth memory in silicon interposer. So that's a lot of information. What does it mean? Well, first of all, it's worth remembering that LinkedIn has been a veritable gold mine recently. For one of the reasons is that you might recall that the Xbox One's APU is supposedly going to be seeing a 20nm shrink. Um, not shrunk by 20nm, but shrunk down to 20nm, and of course that was revealed through a series of um, LinkedIn uh, reveals, if you will. There's links to that in the article that's linked in the video description if you do need that information, but you probably heard about it by now anyway. So what is 2.5D stacked high bandwidth memory, and what's the difference between it and 3D high HBM? So I'm going to provide a brief clarification and comparison. Uh, this is also written in the article if you need further demonstration, although I do need to go into a, like a really in-depth thing of why HBM is a big deal in the future. But moving on. So 2.5D, you have the XPU, and by X I mean over GPU, CPU, APU, whatever the hell PU, sat next to the HBM. So the DRAM, the HBM DRAM, is literally right next to it. It's slap bang to the side. It's their best buddies are coupling each other. And they are sat on top of the interposer. I'll tell you what that is in just a second. The difference between that and a 3D stack, a stack is that it's vertical. So a 3D vertical stack, the HBM is typically on top. And then underneath that, you've got the GPU or CPU or what have you. So you're going to say, well... Okay, well, what's the difference? I mean, what is it just that they're laid out a bit differently? You know, is it just an aesthetics thing? Why, why is there a difference? Well, 2.5D is cheaper. Um, it's, it's a larger area. So, in other words, the chip, technically, the whole package is bigger, which does mean it's going to require a larger cooler. We'll get into that in just a second. But with a 3D one, it's smaller. In other words, because it's vertically stacked, one is on top of another one, the chip's a bit smaller, but it's also more expensive to produce. Fortunately, heat isn't much of an issue. They're roughly the same. Why? Because the DRAM and XPU are sat side by side, so providing you have a cooler that's good enough, and large enough, in theory at least, the heat difference is going to be fairly minor. And to clear up what an interposer is, you can just consider it, well, an interface. It basically just is a communication pathway between the HBM, in this case, and the GPU. And you can think about it almost like a set of wires. They're not only used in this one instance. They're, they were even used back in, I think it was the Pentium 2 or 3. I don't remember exactly. Um, and they've even been used in some cases for redundancy, for example, with like SATA drives. So it's not new. It's not exciting. It's a very kind of solid, if you will, solid uh, technique, so it's nothing amazing in that respect. Now, another concern that you might, or a concern you might have, is the fact that it's 300 watts, which of course was unveiled, theoretically anyway, through the LinkedIn profile. Now, there's a couple of points for us to uh, address with this. The first is that it's not confirmation that it's 300 watts. It's just that it could be up to 300 watts. The second point is that 
even if it is 300 watts, it doesn't tell us the dice, it doesn't actually tell us whether it's 28 or 20 nm. It's more likely to be 28 if it's 300 watts, but that's just a guess. It could be that there are so many shaders in the thing, plus the fact that it's got high bandwidth memory, plus God knows what else, the it needs 300 watts, or maybe that's the the theoretical maximum that the GPU can pull if it's overclocked up the wazoo and blah blah blah. It's it's too difficult to know, but it does lend a little bit of credence that at least for now it's not going to be free, uh, 20 uh, 20 nm. It's going to indeed be 28 nm. But we're not done. No 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 we're not. We also have a bit of information concerning the Radeon R9 380X. So, there's yet another LinkedIn profile. Once again, this is linked in the article if you need it. And it reads the following. Back-end engineer and team leader at Intel and AMD, responsible for taping out state-of-the-art products like the Intel Pentium processor with MMX technology. Ah, those were the days. And AMD R9 290X and, and this is the crucial one, the 380X GPU. The important part, however, is the second part of their profile reads as follows. AMD R9 380X GPUs, and then it says largest in the King of the Hill line of products. So what we can ascertain with that, what we can deduce like Sherlock Holmes, if you will, is based upon this information, the new range of AMD cards are going to be codenamed at the very least, King of the Hill. Which I think is kind of a cool name. I don't know about you, I think it's kind of cool. And so if that's accurate then this is the largest. Now the only reason I can assume it will be the largest is well, the whole printed circuit board because the 390X has the HBM, so that would make sense. In other words, it doesn't need so many GDDR5 chips and all of the, the busways and all the other bits and bobs you'd expect. So what does all of this mean? Well, there's a couple of things. For those of you who are wondering, well, does that mean now it's 28 nm? It cannot compete with the GM, for example, the GM200 which is rumoured to be 20 nm and has a TDP, theoretically anyway, of most likely not higher than 250 watts. One would assume that that would be kind of the ceiling or really what, I, what I, NVIDIA are doing. Um, well, there's a couple of points. Firstly, the heat might not be a big deal. And I say that because, of course, of the various cooling leaks that we keep seeing from AMD, that like hybrid cooler. If it does have the hybrid cooler, what you might have a situation with is that, well, the temperature is pretty manageable. And so even at 300 watts TDP, the car doesn't really get too hot anyway, even overclocked, who knows. The second point um, is that, of course, none of this is clarified and solid yet. The third point is it really, if... Let's assume, worst case scenario, and let's assume it's a fairly hot running card, it's fairly warm, but it's manageable, in other words, we don't get thermal throttling. And let's assume that the cooler is relatively efficient and relatively quiet, so let's once again assume the hybrid cooler is pretty effective. Then it comes down to A price and B performance. Particularly when you consider that those of us who are most likely going to be buying the 390X, for example, are probably going to be water cooling it, particularly for uh, Crossfire or SLI setups. A lot of gamers will water cool for the bleeding edge, anyway. Not everyone does, of course, but a lot of gamers do, in which case it really is not going to matter. What does matter to them is price and performance. In other words, how many frames per second can it render a game in? And is it reliable? Is it sturdy? Does it do what it's supposed to do? And does it scale well in Crossfire? And all of the other usual questions. And so, basically speaking, is it going to be better than the NVIDIA's card? Who knows? All we can do is wait. I, for one, however, really looking forward to this one. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.